Hi, in this video we are going to talk about logistic regression. So let's get started. Basically, in the previous lectures we have been discussing linear regression and we came to the conclusion that okay, sometimes it's working very very fine. But let's suppose this situation. This is kind of a credit scoring example. Let's suppose the fact that we have a single feature, basically a single explanatory variable, the balance on the credit card, and we want to predict whether that given person will be able to pay back the debt. And of course, we have two categories. The one, it is the yes, when the given person is able to pay back the loan or the debt and the zero which refers to no so the given person defaults on paying back the debt so he or she is not able to pay back the debt and we have the data set with several balances if there is a little amount of credit on the credit card of course there's a higher probability that the given person will default if there is lots of lots of money on the credit card, of course there's a high probability that the given person is not going to default. So if we use linear regression for this kinds of situation, it's not going to work that fine. First of all, because it is very sensitive to outliers. Now the linear regression model is going to give us very bad predictions. And what's more important, that we would like to get some probability. That for example, what's the probability that if we have $1,200 on our credit card, what's the probability that we are going to default? And if you may recall linear regression, linear regression is not able to tell anything about the given probability. It's just going to make some predictions. Okay, so a better solution would be to get something like this. And this is the so-called sigmoid function or logistic function. And it is a bit better solution. So we would like to get the probability of that given event. So for example, X is the balance on the credit card. We would like to assign a probability to every single balance basically. And it is the probability that we default, so default is equal to 1, if we suppose that the balance is equal to x. So we would like the probability of defaulting when the balance is equal to a given amount. So it's the probability of default when we know the balance. And this can be calculated by this formula, e to the power of b sub 0 plus b sub 1 times x divided by 1 plus e to the power of b sub 0 plus b sub 1 times x where x is the amount of credit on the credit card a thousand dollars a hundred dollars and so on this is the so-called sigmoid function this is what we have been discussing that this function is going to work better and that can be constructed with this formula why is it good? Because it has a value between 0 and 1. Logistic regression fits the b sub 0 and b sub 1 parameters. These are the regression parameters as we have seen for linear regression. For linear regression we had the a and b parameters that had to be found. Okay. So this fitted curve is not linear. We can make it linear with the help of the logit transformation. So this is the logistic function. As you can see, if the x value is very, very big, the value of the logistic function will be 1. And if the x value is very, very small, then the value will be 0. So it's going to be in the range 0 and 1. And the value is 0 0.5 when the x is equal to 0. This is the sigmoid function or the logistic function. Okay, so what is this logit transformation? We have been talking about that, okay, it is a nonlinear line, but we can make it linear with the logit transformation. And the logit transformation is basically this one, that if we apply the logit on that probability, basically, what is this P? This is the formula for the Px. If we use this logit transformation, which is basically this transformation, we take the logarithm of the px divided by 1 minus px. If we do this calculation, this px is equal to this term. So we just have to make some calculations and we take the natural logarithm of that expression 
and we come to the conclusion that it is equal to b sub 0 plus b sub 1 times x. And okay, you may guess that, okay, it is the same as we have seen for linear regression. We like this linear model. We are able to find the B sub 0 and B sub 1 parameters with the help of gradient descent and so on. So the point of the logic transformation is to make it linear. So logistic regression is a linear regression on the logic transform. How to fit the parameters? what kind of parameters, the B sub 0 and the B sub 1 parameters with maximum likelihood method or gradient descent method as we have seen for linear regression. Of course, we can have the multivariate logistic regression. We try to make some predictions whether the given person will default or not, but we have other data such as the income, the balance and the age. Of course, it can be expressed in these forms, the x1 is going to be the income, the x2 is going to be the balance, the x3 is going to be the age. In this general formula, I suppose that we have n features basically. In this case, we have three features, income, balance, age. So we are able to generalize this logistic regression to as many features as we want. Okay. So this is the logistic function or the sigmoid function. It is a better approach because it is in between 0 and 1 and we want to assign a probability to each balance so we can do it with the help of logistic regression and the sigmoid function. Okay, so this sigmoid function is something like this. 1 divided by 1 plus e to the power of minus z. Basically, this is the equation, this gz, is this function, okay? We can define this Ajax, it's going to be the same as we have seen the capital Ajax for linear regression. It is the model itself. We are able to make predictions according to this Ajax function. And it is equal to the gz, 1 divided by 1 plus e to the minus, and instead of z, we define this beta sub 0 plus beta sub 1 times the x, where x is the income or the credit on the credit card. It is a linear model when the z is equal to this formula, b0 plus b1 times x. If the z is equal to minus infinity, this is what we have been talking about, the value of the sigmoid function is 0. When the z is equal to 0, it's equal to 0 0.5. When the z is equal to plus infinity, the value of the logistic function or the sigmoid function is equal to 1. This is what we have been discussing here. Okay, it's 1 when the x is plus infinity, it's 0 when the x is minus infinity, and it is 0 0.5, the value of the sigmoid function, where the x is equal to 0. So, logistic regression is a linear classifier. We have to feed the beta parameters first. After that, the gz is going to give us the predictions. And the ajax is basically the gz, is the hypothesis. It's going to tell us the probability of y when we have the given x input. What is the y? The probability of that given person, whether he or she is able to pay back the loan or not. It can have the value 1 or 0. 0 if the given person is not able to pay back the debt or the loan. The y is equal to 1 when the given person is able to pay back the debt or the loan. For example, credit scoring, when the Ajax, which is equal to the G of Z, as you may recall, the Ajax is equal to the GZ, with these parameters basically, is greater than 0 0.5, then we predict that the Y is equal to 1, which means no default. If Ajax is smaller than 0 0.5, then the Y is equal to 0, and the given person has defaulted. It is the same as we say that the Z is smaller than 0 default, Z is greater than 0 no default, and the Z is equal to 0 is the decision boundary. It's very, very important that what's the Z parameter here? This beta sub 0 plus beta sub 1 times X, if we make it equal to 0 and we calculate the x, basically it's going to define, in this case, a linear line in a two-dimensional plane, it's going to be the decision boundary. And the decision boundary is going to separate 
their predictions that on one side of the decision boundary there's going to be the y equal to one cases and on the other side of the decision boundary there are going to be the cases where y is equal to zero we are going to talk about the examples in the coming video thanks for watching